Hi, I'm Miles Levy. I'm a consultant endocrinologist in Leicester. I work at Leicester Royal Infirmary at the University Hospitals of Leicester, as well as the Spire Hospital in Leicester. Uh, diabetes insipidus is a rare condition uh, associated with an inability to conserve water. So you end up um, passing a very large volumes of pale urine that looks indistinguishable from water and you feel very thirsty. And it's because either a, a defect in the production of a hormone called vasopressin or because of resistance to vasopressin. Uh, the term is a little bit confusing because it's got the word diabetes in which everyone thinks is sugar diabetes. So soon we will change the name to AVP deficiency and AVP resistance, but it's essentially a condition that makes you very dehydrated quickly because you pass lots of pale water and get very thirsty. Yes, it's got a low prevalence of about one in 25,000. So it really, really is rare, rare when you think of the prevalence of diabetes mellitus, sugar diabetes is very, very common. And so it's not to be confused with the two. And one of the reasons we want to change the name is because if it sounds like something rare, like AVP deficiency, where you are deficient in the hormone vasopressin and the treatment is desmopressin, then hopefully you'll get earlier access to specialist care. So it's a very rare condition that certainly requires specialist input early on. Otherwise, there's a risk of harm and potentially death in the worst case scenario. Like most conditions in medicine, the best way to make a diagnosis is to take a history and talk to the patient and listen to the symptoms. And the symptoms are usually very striking in that you have very large volumes of pale urine that happen overnight <coughs> and people wake up with a desperate desire to pass large volumes of urine. Often people can't get in car journeys because they're needing to find toilets. And the thirst is absolutely um, exquisite, whereby some children uh, lick the condensation off of windows and drink from puddles and taps. So the severe, so the history, uh, but then there are tests that you can do. Some are simple, like measuring the concentration of the urine in the blood. The blood concentration is high, the urine very low. Um, we used to do something called a water deprivation test, which is a little bit of a cruel test to do if, if you really do have diabetes insipidus because it, it's depriving someone of the life-saving desire to drink. And now we can measure a hormone called copeptin, which is a precursor molecule. And um, there's some really good research by somebody called Miriam Chris Crane in Switzerland. And I'm pleased to say that in Leicester that we can, we can do that test. Uh, and it's probably going to replace the water deprivation test because one of the things it can look like is people that just have a desire to drink called polydipsia, where the problem is not with a hormone deficit, it's with a behavioral uh, desire to drink water, which of course makes you pass lots of urine as a result of the water intake rather than the water being pulled out. So, so it can be difficult to make the diagnosis, but the place to start is the history and then do some tests. Uh, it depends on the cause. Uh, it can certainly be treated. Um, the most important thing is to work out the cause. So if it is AVP deficiency, which means an area uh, just below the brain called the pituitary gland is not producing the hormone, it's important to work out the cause. Some patients with a strong family history have a genetic defect which can't be cured, but can be very easily treated with a drug called desmopressin, which can come in either a spray, a tablet, or in the, in the, in the acute situation, injection, uh, or a, a, a melt under the tongue. Uh, patients may have pituitary tumors or infiltrative inflammatory pituitary disease. We often do scans of the pituitary, that's with uh, AVP deficiency, and then you treat whatever the pathology is with either an operation or with steroids. So certainly the pathology can be treated. AVP resistance is a problem with the kidney, which can be due to disturbances in calcium or potassium. That can absolutely be cured if you, if you work out the cause of those electrolyte disturbances. If it's due to a kidney problem itself or due to a genetic defect in the receptor, then that's better managed by a, a kidney renal specialist actually than an endocrinologist. So uh, it depends on the cause. It can be cured, but it's AVP deficiency is really satisfying to treat because within one dose of the medication, you'll suddenly stop peeing and not feel thirsty if you get the diagnosis right. <laughs> 